Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the GBYWN Australia podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Aston Crude. And here today I am by myself because here today I am going to be debuting a new show here for the podcast. And this will be a little series that will take us through a trip back in time from when I, myself, personally, Aston Crude, became a backyard wrestler through the years of my time in XCW all the way until 2010 when XCW finally sailed off into the sunset. The reason I'm doing this is because there's a lot of history that has taken place in my past that many people may not know about and there are a lot of fun stories and these are going to be just nice and short and sweet little episodes and I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, The Aston Crew Chronicles XEW Days. But before I get to XEW, there is a history in which I was a part of backyard wrestling that needs to be told before we get to XCW. And it starts in 1998. And in 1998, I met friends in grade six. And some of these friends had older brothers. And I guess their older brothers may have introduced their younger brothers to wrestling. You know, you'd go to Video Easy or Blockbuster Video. You'd hire out the latest WWF pay-per-view on VHS. You'd have that for a week. You know, the friends would come over. They'd watch the pay-per-view. You know, that's kind of how I guess those guys must have got into wrestling. But me personally, I got into wrestling because of Survivor Series 1998. It was airing on free-to-air TV at the time. I believe it was Channel 10. And I sat there at my dad's house by myself watching this show. And I believe that a lot of people became wrestling fans back at this time because of Survivor Series 1998. It was a thrilling show and I was hooked ever since. Now also around this time, you know, the friends, you know, all the friends, we we would have sleepovers, hang out you know, outside of school hours. And at this sleepover, this particular one was the first time I ever had some form of a wrestling match. It was a fatal four-way elimination match for the European Championship, pitting myself against my friend Donny, my other friend Adam, and I believe my other friend David. It was either David or Reese. We had this four-way elimination match. I won, of course, because why Why not? I mean, I win, I've, I've won everything else for the rest of my life, so why not start with a win? So I won the European Championship that night, but by, I believe I beat Donny to, to win the championship at the end. And then, you know, I strutted around the house for the rest of the night like a fucking loser holding onto this cardboard version of the European Championship. So from there, you know, our group of friends, we would always meet up at the park after school on the weekends. We'd play soccer, we'd play basketball, we'd get up to mischief in the streets playing knock and run on people's front doors, run away and hide and then like watch them as they come out confused and, you know, uh, wondering who the fuck is fucking with them. And then we go and do it again and again and again and again before we... Before you knew it, we'd be getting in trouble, getting chased by grown adults down the road, people in their cars chasing us around, getting up to quite a lot of mischief. So, of course, well, at some point, it seems like a fucking great idea that we all start having wrestling matches at the park. So it was Ocean Reef Primary School Park, and we would mimic different superstars. So I would probably be The Rock. Wiz Kid, my friend Wesley, would be Triple H. You know, Daniel Bonner would be Kane, whatever. We'd all mimic our favorite WWF superstars. And eventually, one day, Donnie suggests, why don't we make our own characters and have our own titles? 
And I said, no way, that's a ridiculous idea. Who would ever think of doing that? No way. Over my dead body, we're doing that, Donnie. We're mimicking the WWF guys is way more fun. About 15 minutes later, I realized, you know what? That would, that's actually a fucking sick idea. So that's when the Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation, the ORWF, begins. I know that I was called Mad Dog back then. I was Mad Dog. Daniel Bonner was known as Diffuser. Uh, my friend Wes was known as Wiz Kid. I don't quite know who uh, the other guys were known as. I know uh, my friend Reese was Reese the Worm Brian. I'll get to all these guys a little bit later. But the Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation begins. Now what the Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation really was, was a scattering of singles matches that would take place at the park. We only ever had one full show, and I believe it was called WrestleMania, where we had a card of matches, and the other, you know, we would watch the matches, and they were just basically wrestling you know, on the grass at the park. I remember the main event of that WrestleMania, Tyrone Graham, the biggest kid in our grade, became the first ever ORWF heavyweight champion. And not only that, we brought in other titles. We had the tag team titles and we had the hardcore title. The hardcore title was under 24-7 rules, just like WWF on TV. So... Excuse me, just got a little bit interrupted there. Um, so we had these titles. Tyrone Graham was our first heavyweight champion. You probably saw a picture of him just then. Uh, we had our WrestleMania, but as I was saying, the ORWF was a scattering of singles matches. So for example, WizKid and I would be at the park and we would just, all right, let's have a match. And we wouldn't have to have a referee there or anything. We wouldn't have to have any spectators. This is just what the ORWF was. Now let me talk about the hardcore title. 24-7 rules. This was the best part, I believe, of the Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation. Because we'd hang out on weekends. We'd have, you know, little uh, like sleepovers at Tyrone's house. Or, you know, we'd be at the park getting up to mischief. Whatever. Now, with the ORWF, we didn't predetermine who was winning what. So, if you were the hardcore champion, you would legitimately get attacked by your friends to, so they can go for the hardcore championship and go for the pin. I remember one instance where myself and WizKid were walking to the park and he was on one side of my bike and I was pushing it on the other side. And on the side closest to him was my bike helmet hanging off my handlebars. He grabs the helmet, whacks me over the back of the head. I go down. He gets on top to pin me. He wins the hardcore title. So it's basically to your discretion. If it was a surprising enough attack, you would allow the person to beat you for the hardcore title. So things like that were happening all the time and it was so much fun. And we made our own championships and all that and... We were really trying to make it as prestigious as we could, you know, the times that we were doing it. But as I said, it's a scattering of singles matches. They, these matches would take place, you know, over the course of time, here, there and everywhere. Obviously, Tyrone was our first heavyweight champion. He lost the title to me. And then I believe myself and WizKid just exchanged the championship over and over until the end of the ORWF. But Tyrone's finisher was the Powerbomb. And obviously, the, the favorite story of ORWF folklore would be Tyrone Graham powerbombing WizKid onto a pile of fresh dog shit. This is, without a doubt, the greatest memory I have of the ORWF. Tyrone picked Wesley up onto his shoulders for that powerbomb, set him down onto that dog shit, and proceeded to swivel WizKid's hips to smear the brown dog shit into WizKid's white t-shirt. I believe Just Mike was there. I'm not sure if Diffuser was there, but some of us were there to witness this take place and see WizKid walk off into the distance, pulling his white t-shirt away from his body 
so that he would not feel the warmth of the fresh brown dog shit against his person. That's my favourite memory of Tyrone Graham in the ORWF. Just Mike, you would all know Just Mike years later for his run in XCW. Just Mike was the commissioner of uh, the ORWF. Lance Lightning was my tag team partner. We were the last ever ORWF tag team champions. But back then, Lance Lightning was known simply as Leslie Guy. Diffuser. We all know Diffuser is one of the greatest backyard wrestlers of all time. He was in the ORWF as well and one of the, the great hardcore champions of the ORWF. Reese the Worm Brian is the next person I want to talk about. Reese Bryan was basically the littlest guy in our group except for WizKid's little brother. But the thing about Reese was that he had this uncanny strength where he could pick up anyone in the group on his shoulders, lock them in Lex Luger's torture rack, and then turn that torture rack into Mark Merrow's TKO. And when he would do the TKO, he would spin and spin and spin and spin until he would grab you by the head and pull you down to the grass and it would nail you every time. So everyone was always so scared of Reese because out of the blue, he would go, it's TKO time. Just like Mark Merrill on WWF Attitude, everyone would fucking run away. He'd get his hands on someone and fucking nail them. Another story about Reese the Worm, Brian was... His mum, well, look, his family lived across the road from the park. And if we were wrestling at the park, his mum may or may not peek out to see what we're up to because we're always there, so she's always keeping an eye on us. Well, one infamous moment that took place was that we were wrestling at the time. And Reese's mum was at her front doorstep. And she yells across all the way to the park, and we can hear her. And she yells, Race! Come home now! Why? You were wrestling! And ever since that day, Race would always say, Sorry guys, mum mum won't let me wrestle. Mum won't let me wrestle. Mum won't let me wrestle. And... We would, you know, take that quote of Reese, come home now. And we would evolve it, turn it into a little song. Reese, come home now. Or change it into different versions like Reese, come home now, etc. I guess you had to be there, but we would always give Reese a bit of shit because his mum just. She was so strict on him doing the wrestling. But that was my fond memories of my old friend, Reese Bryan, from the ORWF. Next, I'm talking about Brad, and I'm talking about WizKid, the Cossington Hand brothers. Wiz and Brad, I mean, Wes was my best friend at the time, and Brad was his little brother. Wes would give, a Brad, a, give Brad a pedigree in any and every location you can think of. He would pedigree Brad onto a garbage bin. He would pedigree Brad Brad into a dumpster. He would pedigree Brad into the foam pit at the jungle gym. We would go see a movie and at the end of the movie they go up to the front where the screen was where they had that platform in front of it and Wes would give him a pedigree there. That's my fondest memories of Brad. He was always the younger guy who would always take the craziest bumps and he never wore shoes. Wizkid, he was my greatest opponent. We would have wrestling matches that would go from the park and we'd brawl all the way to his house and end the match in his lounge room. Or sometimes brawl all the way from his lounge room all the way to the park and then all the way back for a Falls Count Anywhere match. I mean, these were some great times. And some innocent times back in the day, you know, I'm, I'm 11, 12 years old around this time. And Wes really well and truly was my best friend at the time. And we had some real great battles and we exchanged that heavyweight title over and over and over again. Another person I wanted to talk about was David Connell. David Connell was the American kid in our group. And for whatever reason, David Connell's fucking ankle 
was just like so fragile that every fucking time he wrestled, he would hurt his ankle. So the quote always was, oh, guys, my ankle, my ankle. So every single time David would hurt his ankle, we'd burst into laughter whilst he's on the ground in tears. I really miss David Connell. He was a really cool kid and he's since moved back to America. Another story I wanted to talk about was a guy called Adam. He was in our group. Um, you know, Wizkid didn't have the best run, I suppose, in the ORWF. And Adam, one time at his house, we were having a sleepover, the three of us. And they were battling for the hardcore title. I was the referee. And it was a great little back and forth contest in the lounge room. Adam would then proceed to sit on Wizkid's chest and fart. And it was a ferocious fart that you could feel the vibration of through the floor. Wizkid had had enough. One, two, three. Adam Reed is the new hardcore champion. So those are some stories of the guys from the Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation. There's some pictures accompanying that. We did have some different people come in from time to time that weren't really on the active roster, but they would just come in and have a wrestling match here and there. But those were the main guys. The Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation ended when primary school ended. So, you know, year seven, I guess that's 1999. That was the one year that we did do it, and that was the last year that we did it. I believe the last ever ORWF match took place between myself and Wizkid. Um, but the ORWF was over. The notable alumni, obviously from the ORWF, is Lance Lightning, Just Mike, and Diffuser. Those guys would eventually come along with me to be a part of XCW at some point from 2001 onwards. Wizkid would end up wrestling for XCW for one show. And I guess ORWF in some way is a little bit of a precursor to what XCW would be. And it gave me, I guess, some knowledge on how to, you know, come up with a character, have a wrestling match, pick finishing moves and all that. So it was really just my beginning in backyard wrestling. And as I said, Diffuser, Lance, Just Mike and Wiz, we'd all come across, would all come across with me when I started XCW with Johnny V, which will be the next part of the Aston Crew Chronicles XCW days. So this was episode number one, the beginning of my time in backyard wrestling and the first full year that I did backyard wrestling in the Ocean Reef Wrestling Federation back in 1999. The next episode, we will be talking about the uh, early days of XCW. Basically, when we had a, there was a federation that was going to be formed called HBW. It didn't end up happening. So we go into full detail. Well, I'll go into full detail about talking with Johnny V about starting XCW. And I'm going to have a full episode talking about that very first XCW show and all the build up to it. I will also be reading excerpts from my book, Our Own Little World, The XCW Story, and I will reflect on how I wrote that chapter at the time and what I was thinking at the time and my reflections of that from years later, now looking back um, as I'm coming towards the end of my time in backyard wrestling. I want to thank you for listening. I hope that this wasn't too painful. I'm going to be putting some pictures up there for you to see these people that I'm talking about, just so there's something to look at as the narrative goes on and I'm not just fucking yapping and giving you all this information without giving you something to look at. There was no there was no footage, unfortunately, of the ORWF, so this is the best that I can do. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if it does, if it does well, I will continue with it. If it doesn't do well, then so be it, but... We'll see how we go. Thank you for listening to the GBYWN Australia podcast. This is the first episode of the Aston Crude Chronicles XCW Days, and I will be with you next time.